You are listening to The Overthinker's Guide to Joy, episode 99. This is the one where I'm going to talk about procrastination. And you may want to grab a pen and paper for this one because it turns out it's a little more complicated than you might think. Let's dive in. This is a podcast for overthinkers, overdoers, and overachievers who are tired of feeling overanxious and just want to feel better. I'm your host, certified life coach, Jackie DeGrenis. Hi there, and welcome back. So I think it was the last episode that I recorded that I had mentioned all the different things that were getting in the way of recording my episode. I think it was like after a Monday holiday, and so I was playing catch up all week. And then I was having a technical issue with my microphone. And then when I finally sat down to record the episode, there were landscapers outside and it was like leaf blowers and lawnmowers and there was too much noise to record. And so I kept getting farther and farther behind. And this week, I didn't have any of those excuses. I could argue that I was planning to do another episode on time management, so a totally different topic. And then I changed my mind because then there was another topic that I wanted to cover. And then somehow I just didn't put my butt in the chair to write my outline and sit down and record it. But then I seem to have lost a day and then another. And then today I found myself doing laundry and making fresh juice with my brand new electric juicer, which I may have inadvertently broken on its maiden voyage, but that's another story. And my husband walks into the kitchen as I'm knee deep in my pineapple turmeric ginger concoction. And while I'm cursing at my new juicer for making this horrific noise, and then I saw little black flecks of plastic collecting the top of my freshly squeezed juice, which is what made me suspect that I probably broke it. Anyway, my husband walks in just like at this moment that I'm cursing and I'm, my hands are covered in juice and all the things. And he says, hey, aren't you supposed to be recording your podcast today? And I sheepishly said, yes, but can't you see I'm busy? And he chuckled and said, by making a huge mess in the kitchen so that you have something to clean up and avoid recording your podcast? (laughs) I'm like, yeah, so? Anyway, he was right. He was totally calling me out on avoidance behavior and procrastination. And that's when I decided, you know what? I really should be doing an episode on procrastination. Because it's not just me procrastinating today. It's kind of like everybody I've talked to this week has had something looming large over them that has caused them to procrastinate. And I thought, you know, it happens to all of us. And I don't consider myself a procrastinator. I consider myself really kind of Johnny on the spot about schedules and things like that. But I do find there are certain things that I drag my heels about, and this might be one of them. As much as I love doing a podcast, I'm always like, oh, is that the right topic? Is that really what I want to say? You could say that I overthink the Overthinker's Guide to Joy podcast, but I think it's really an important topic. And I know I've covered it in variations on other episodes, but I think it's important to cover it again. I ended up doing a little bit of research on it. And I was like, well, why do people procrastinate? I mean, I know why I was procrastinating because I really wasn't sure which topic I wanted to talk about. And then I allowed myself to get very distracted. But what are some of the other reasons people procrastinate? Well, it turns out that procrastination is both complex and varied. And like so many other things, of course, it's rooted in psychological, emotional, and situational factors. The question, though, is why do people procrastinate? Well, it turns out there's a bunch of pretty common reasons, but there's a lot of them. So the biggest one is fear of failure. People may procrastinate because they're afraid of not doing the task well. And this fear can paralyze them into inaction, which is actually very closely tied to the next reason, and that is perfectionism. So this is a subject that I've talked a lot about in the past. The desire to complete tasks perfectly can lead to procrastination. Those who set unrealistic high standards for themselves might delay starting a task because they fear they won't meet their own standards. I relate to this a lot. My clients relate to that one as well. But then there's a third reason, and that is lack of motivation. Now, when individuals are not interested or invested in a task, they are more likely to procrastinate. 
Now, I don't want to call out my daughter, but she doesn't listen to the podcast anyway, so I think I'll be okay. (laughs) But my youngest daughter is home from college for the summer and she works full time. She's super helpful when she's home. She helps make dinner and do the dishes and is generally just a joy to be around. However, keeping her room neat or putting away her laundry after it's been done is a very low priority on her proverbial totem pole. And this is kind of foreign to me because I'm a super neat neck and I have to put everything in its place to just feel like I can think clearly. But she apparently lacks that motivation and I'm hoping that's kind of a latent gene and she'll grow into it. But anyway, I digress. Lack of motivation is a major source of procrastination. But then there's another reason, which is poor time management. Some people struggle with organizing their time effectively and that leads to procrastination because they simply misjudge the time needed to complete tasks. But there's another one, and that is overwhelm. So if a task seems too large or daunting, people might procrastinate because they feel simply overwhelmed and don't know where to start. And then there's the issue of distractions. And in a world full of distractions, just for example, social media and television being the two most obvious, it's very easy to get sidetracked and delay tasks. And then there's the issue of lack of self-discipline. Now, some people struggle to self-regulate and stay on task without external prompts or deadlines. And then finally, there's emotional regulation issues. And that is procrastination can actually be an avoidance mechanism to avoid negative emotions associated with a certain task. So, Tasks that are boring or create anxiety, like for example, a lot of people procrastinate paying their taxes because it's very confronting. It's not only sometimes tricky to read the forms and understand them, but they also don't want to have to write a big check to the government. So they might procrastinate on that because it creates anxiety or something as mundane as like doing the dishes, it's boring. People might avoid it for that reason. Again, emotionally regulating that fear of boredom or irritation. These are the reasons behind, or I should say the common reasons behind procrastination. But there's also different types of procrastination, which are categorized based on underlying causes or behavioral patterns. So here's a few examples. There's passive procrastination. This is the classic form where individuals delay tasks without actively making a decision to do so. They just avoid the task until the last minute. So there's no malice. There's no agenda. They just don't do it until they have to. Then there's active procrastination. And in this case, these are individuals who deliberately choose to delay tasks because they believe they work better under pressure. They might still manage to complete the tasks on time, but they use the delay as a strategy. So anybody who's ever known people who cram for tests because they think they do better, that's an active procrastination. So they think that that stress deadline of, oh, I only have this many hours to study, I'll focus better, I'll do better, and I'll perform better. Again, it's a strategy. It's not necessarily a good one, but I do know a lot of people who implement that type of procrastination. Then there's the perfectionist procrastination. And here again, the delay is due to the fear of being unable to complete the task perfectly. So perfectionists may spend way too much time planning or refining details, which can lead to delays. I've also known people who procrastinate because they're perfectionists because they like that active procrastination, that thing where they have that self-imposed deadline because they're running out of hours. So there's two different things. One causes delays, they miss the deadline and one loves the pressure of the deadline. Then there's decisional procrastination. Now, this involves delaying decision-making, often due to fear of making the wrong choice. And individuals might postpone tasks because they're simply indecisive. Now, I know a lot of people who are not good at making travel plans because of that. It's just too daunting. And I know a lot of people who aren't good party planners because of that. They think they want to have a party, an open house, a birthday party, some kind of celebration. And ultimately, they're just so afraid of making the wrong decision, they just never plan it. Then there's avoidant procrastination. And this is the type of person 
who avoids tasks that they find unpleasant or evoke negative emotions. I had mentioned like paying your taxes could be one of them. So to escape the task, they might engage in other more enjoyable activities. They may go play a round of golf, or they may go to the movies, or they may zone out in front of the TV. They'll basically do anything to avoid the unpleasantness of whatever the task at hand is. Then there's chronic procrastination. And this is a habitual form of procrastination in which individuals consistently delay tasks across various aspects of their lives, which often leads to very significant consequences. People who are chronic procrastinators are often accused of being lazy. And it may not be laziness. It may be all those other things we talked about, which is time management, avoidant behavior, indecision, perfectionism, that leads to a lifestyle or a lifetime of chronic procrastination. But the thing is, Understanding the type and the underlying reasons for procrastination can actually help us develop strategies to overcome it. So here are the most effective strategies or techniques to stop procrastinating. The first one is set specific and achievable goals. By breaking down large tasks into smaller manageable steps, this makes the task seem less overwhelming and then provides a clear roadmap for completion. Another technique is prioritizing the tasks. And by prioritizing the task, you base them on their urgency and importance. You focus on high priority tasks first to ensure that the essential work gets done. Another one is to create a schedule. Simply plan your day with specific time blocks dedicated to each task. Having a structured schedule can reduce the likelihood of procrastination. The other one is something I've talked about in a couple of episodes now called the Pomodoro Technique. And this is the one I use to write. In fact, it's the one I use to write my book that's coming out this fall. But I've discussed this many times because I love it so much. And this is the method in which an individual works in very short, focused bursts, typically 25 minutes followed by a short five-minute break. What this method helps you do is maintain focus and reduce the temptation to procrastinate. So whether you're paying bills or filing or cleaning out your closet or writing a book or writing a song or writing an email or series of emails, that 25-minute blocks can really give you that focus and then you take that break and you come back to it. Okay, what's another technique? Eliminate distractions. And while this is painfully obvious, I am victim of it too. I leave my phone on my desk, and then if I don't turn off the ringer or the notifications, I find myself glancing over who texted, who called, who left a voicemail, what's happening on my social media. So if you're like me and that phone is a big temptation, You want to either turn it over, turn it off, or leave it in another room when you need to focus. So another thing is creating a dedicated workspace to eliminate distractions. So, you know, if you don't have an office, even if it's just a corner of your living room or your kitchen, but again, turning off the TV, having people be quiet around you or use your headphones if you can't get the piece you need to focus. I've told you many times, I use classical music, often in my headphones, to just eliminate distractions around me. I find it very calming, and it helps me focus. Another one is to set deadlines. So self-imposed deadlines can create a sense of urgency and help you stay on track. Now, if possible, if you're not great with your own self-imposed deadlines, you want to share these deadlines with others to increase accountability. So that might be your partner, your roommate, a colleague, a coach, a good friend, a neighbor, but by giving other people and asking them to hold you accountable, then when they call you and say, or text you and say, how's that paper coming? Or how's that bill paying coming? You feel accountable to somebody else. Okay. What's another technique? Practice self-compassion. If this doesn't come up in every episode, I'd be surprised. Self-compassion is just being kind to yourself. 
recognize that procrastination is really a common behavior and focus on getting back on track rather than dwelling on past procrastination. I think when we identify or self-label, say things like, I'm a procrastinator, or I've always been a procrastinator, or I'm lazy, that's not serving us. So rather looking forward of, I am getting better at time management, or I'm getting better at doing things on time, or I'm setting schedules, I'm setting deadlines, I've got an accountability partner forward-looking, positive, self-concept statements is so much better than sitting in the muck of, I'm always late, I'm always procrastinating, I'm always behind. So what's another technique? Find motivation. Identify the underlying reasons why completing this task is so important. And connect this task to larger goals or values that can provide motivation. So for example, if you know that decluttering your house is going to make you feel lighter and better, then when you take one closet at a time, the motivation is by doing this one closet, I'm going to feel lighter and better. I'm going to give clothes away or I'm going to sell clothes or I'm going to get rid of things that don't belong. I'm going to have more room to breathe. And then you envision your house being less cluttered everywhere because you started with that closet. That's finding motivation. Another one is to use rewards. Set up a reward system for completing tasks. And once the task is complete, it can be as simple as taking a short break, enjoying a treat, or engaging in your favorite activity. What's another? Visualize success. And this is true in all aspects of life. But imagining the positive outcomes of completing the task and the negative consequences of not completing it Visualization can help increase motivation and reduce procrastination. Here's one of my favorite techniques. Adopt the two-minute rule. If a task can be done in two minutes or less, do it immediately. This can help prevent small tasks from piling up and becoming overwhelming. So I always say this about things that are easy. Like if you have an easy email to answer, just answer it. Like just if it's yes or no, or it takes one sentence, just write it, get it off your plate, get it out of your inbox. If you have a text that is a yes or no question or just an easy answer, get rid of it. Like answer it, be done with it. Same with like picking up a piece of clothing off the floor. Like rather than leaving it there and then all of a sudden you're tempted to maybe throw another piece of clothes on the floor, just pick it up. Throw it in the laundry hamper, put it on a hanger, hang it on a hook. Just the things that are easy are such low hanging fruit and you'll have a sense of accomplishment right away. And then it be kind of accomplishment begets accomplishment. All right. What's another trick? Build a routine. Establish daily habits and routines that incorporate important tasks. So consistency can reduce the tendency to procrastinate over time. I've talked about this so many times, but like I have a morning routine and one of my morning routines includes, of course, feeding the dog, which I can't forget because he'll bark at me every second until he gets fed, but also emptying the dishwasher and putting away the clean pots and pans from the night before that were drying in the rack. Like I just get my kitchen organized first thing in the morning. It takes me about 10 minutes and then I have a nice clean kitchen to work with for the rest of the day, whether that's making lunch or making dinner, or even if I'm gone for the day, I come home to a nice clean house. But little habits like building a routine, making your bed, emptying your dishwasher, putting away your laundry, all of those things can help mitigate that overwhelming feeling of, oh my God, I have so much to do. I can't get to anything important. What's another one? Seek support. So we talked about this before, but sharing your goals and progress and progress, notice I said, right? So not just your goals, but what you've accomplished with a friend, mentor, or accountability partner. This is so good because it's so great to have a cheerleader and you got to celebrate the small stuff. You can't just be like, oh, I finished my book. That's too huge. You've got to be like, I wrote a page today, or I finished a chapter. Like you really have to celebrate the journey as well as the end result. What's another one? Focus on progress, not perfection. Accept the tasks do not need to be perfect. 
aim for progress and completion rather than perfection. This can reduce that fear of failure and the habit of procrastination. Another one, reflect on success. So this goes back to seeking support, right? And then telling them about your progress, not just finishing your goals, but by reflecting on your success regularly, daily, regularly reviewing what strategies worked best for you and reflect on where you had success. Learning from past experiences can help refine your approach to overcoming procrastination. So I often look back and I'm like, oh, how did I do that before? Oh, that's right. I used my Pomodoro method and I listened to classical music and it helped me sit down and focus and get whatever writing I needed done. But you might have your version of that. We've covered a lot of territory today. And I know this is going to be one of those episodes where you're like, wait, 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 that was too much. So listen again. Take a piece of paper out and write down what resonated for you. What do you think will help you overcome whatever you're procrastinating with? Which brings me to my sort of final question. What's on your to-do list that you've been procrastinating? Is it like a big goal, like finishing a book or a screenplay? Or is it organizing your garage? Or is it something small? but kind of boring, like filing paperwork or putting away your laundry, whatever it is, start a list. Like everything, put all the things that you need to do on one sheet of paper and then divide it into priorities. What's big, what's small. Tackle the small ones if it's like under the two minute rule, like get those off your plate because that feeling of checking those things off your list is going to create momentum for you. And when you get to the big ones, divide those into smaller tasks too. And then it's just rinse and repeat. All right, friends, that's what I have for you today. And now that I'm finally finished with my podcast that I was procrastinating for several days, I'm going to reward myself by having a snack and going to take a long walk with a friend this afternoon. I look forward to talking to you next time and bye for now. If you would like to learn more about working with me as a coach, you can connect with me through my website at JackieDeGrenis.com. That's J-A-C-K-I-E-D-E-C-R-I-N-I-S.com. 